Hey guys, how's it going? So you just saw me create a flight plan from Finland all the way to the United States. Now this is because I wanted to actually do a ferry flight. Now I've never really done one in real life uh, or in the sim, but I've read a lot about them recently. I thought it'd be really cool to give it a shot. So with all that, um, you can see the stops between each of these airports. I try to get them around an hour, two hours, roughly, and uh, that'll be the end of each episode. So um Hopefully they won't be too long. Uh, I've already recorded one part, which I'll show here later, and I'll just time lapse the rest. So uh, enough about that. Let's go ahead and talk about the airplane. So here it is. This is the Let L410 Turbolet. Uh, it's a Czech manufactured twin engine turbo that was made in the 70s. It's really all you need to know. Uh, sl slightly older aircraft. Uh, it's real pretty, uh, to be honest, but uh, I had a little trouble with the systems. I found a really, really nice uh, freeware version of this, which uh, I'll include in the description. Very well made. Um, I had a chance to actually play around with it. I spent three hours, roughly, uh, inside the sim, just running through the systems, as you can see down here. Um, I made sure to uh, learn how to turn it on, turn it off. Uh, I even flew a couple instrument approaches. Uh, you don't see it on here, but uh, the freeware version has a Garmin GPS in it. So uh, we will have uh, GPS capabilities. I'll make sure to kind of change the weather. Um, I'll set it to real world, but if that's no fun, then I'll kind of edit it around so we can actually shoot some instrument approaches uh, if the weather's bad enough or just do some visual ones. Now to make it even... A little bit more interesting, I was going to throw in some random failures. Now, x -Plane, I think, does a really good job with this. I haven't actually had a chance to play around with it, but um, I'll just kind of fail some random stuff. Uh, it could be a light bulb or it could be an engine. Uh, it just really depends on um, on the settings, and we'll, we'll kind of see how that goes. I'll talk more about the systems as we start flying because, uh, well, there's, uh, there's plenty to talk about, and this is... Uh, it's a pretty archaic plane, but anyway, back over here, I went ahead and um, you saw a little bit of the flight plan. I'll go ahead and uh, pull that up here. So this is the uh, this is the total flight plan, and as you can see, we're looking at eighteen thousand feet direct, pretty much everywhere. Now I just put that as a placeholder. Uh, the POH actually recommends fourteen thousand feet. Now. The only part in uh, particular that's going to take the longest is right here, uh, this 384 nautical mile jump between Iceland and Greenland. Uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Uh, I haven't checked fuel uh, in terms of like weight and balance, how uh, X-Plane does that. Uh, I went ahead and downloaded the POH, all 907 pages of it. I think it was something like that. I only read about 20 pages, to be honest with you guys. But um, the fuel requirements, I I think we're either like right on the edge. I can't remember now. But anyway, that'll um, that that shouldn't be any problem. But that will be the longest uh, part of our journey between those two places. So, like I said, I'll um. I'll try, I'll try to keep all these videos roughly the same length, but, uh, you know, sometimes there weren't airports close enough, so some of these flights will be longer, some of them will be a little shorter, but I'll try to throw in some really nice scenery. I found a bunch of cool scenery files, so during the day we'll be able to see some really nice stuff, and as you guys know, X-Plane is awesome at night, so um, if we fly over um, anywhere that's actually populated, we'll get some, we'll get some pretty nice uh, lighting. And that's uh that's that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I'll do my best to keep this as entertaining as possible. Uh, I'm gonna fly each of these legs, so it is gonna be. Uh, I think it's close to like 18 plus hours of actual flight time. So I am gonna break these down because uh, I don't think any sane person can do that. I haven't, I haven't uh, really wanted to try that. But yeah, I'll um I'll go ahead and jump right into the video, and uh, I'll see you guys in Finland. And here we are. So, this is uh, Finland. It's 11-ish at night, so it is it is pretty dark. But um, we'll once we get started, we'll turn on some more lights. So you can kind of see the interior of the cockpit here. It is really dark. Uh, so we'll come back out here. We'll close the we'll close this door right here, and um, 
then we'll go up to the cockpit and uh, we'll see if we can't adjust those lights so let's move up and actually I might be able to snap to there we go okay so I, I got a few um, key sets we could snap to it now now I just have to figure out how to use these okay the lights okay so it, the mouse is a little opposite of what it needs to be so so starting out I just turned on the battery there that's uh, the first one and let's see if I can brighten this up just a little bit here yeah these there we go so turn on the first battery now we'll hit the second one uh, so you see the enunciator panel is now lit up we'll go ahead and throw on the inverters and um, We'll run through the fuel systems. Now I'm just doing this off the POH. This is the recommended start procedure. It's uh, just a checklist I'm following. Okay, and the last thing, we'll get that beacon. Okay, and just checking if I need anything else at the moment. Doesn't look like it. Uh, so with that, I'll get the trims here in just a second. So. Under the little tab right there is our two starters, uh, one for each engine. I'll go ahead and throw on the position light so anyone who is near us can see us. Now we'll, um, we'll actually go ahead and start engine number two first. So you should be able to hear it uh, winding up right now. We'll look at the gas gen temp or the gas gen percent and we'll, um, yeah, it should be right over there. We're looking for around 28, 29 and then we'll uh, introduce fuel. Okay, and you can kind of see it rise up there, and then uh, we'll go back to the feather lever and uh, set it to idle. Okay, bring that up. Okay, now we'll do the same with engine number one. You might be able to see the blade here. Oh, maybe just a little bit. Okay, there's close to 29%. Let's get the fuel here. And okay, so all I did was turn on the ultra the generators, I mean, and set the trim. So it looks like we're good to go. Um, there's a little dark out, so let's make sure I got all my lights. Okay, all the lights are good. Okay, now we'll um, release the brakes here, and uh, we'll start adding some power. And that should be good. There we go. And I noticed during the editing that my mouse was on screen, at least for the first part of this. I'm sorry about that. I just forgot to click um, the setting to turn it off, but I noticed it about an hour into my recording, and uh, I turned it off, so hopefully that won't bother you guys too much. Now, this is a really large airport, so I'm not going to make you guys like watch my entire taxiing process uh, I'll go ahead and time lapse probably from right up here until um, right on the runway and then um, I'll probably time lapse a few more times because I am doing this all in real world time so it does take two hours to actually fly to these places for each of the legs and whatnot so um, I'll just kind of time lapse in and out and um, We'll just go from there.
Okay, we're just about ready to go now. We've got our landing lights on, and we'll check see if we need to turn on anything else. Looks good. Okay, don't see anything else we have to flip here. Uh, we'll make sure the trims are set. This has a we need a slightly nose high trim on this one, and uh, other than that, I think everything looks good, guys. So go ahead and uh, release the brakes here, if I remember what key that is. Okay, and we'll go ahead and taxi out. Now I really love X-Plane, it's the airports by itself, especially the nighttime flying, it's just incredible. It's, I mean, every airport default uh, that I've found so far looks like this, and it's just, it's fantastic. I'm trying to work on the bloom uh, to make it a little bit more realistic, so we'll I'll keep on adding stuff kind of as we go. So uh, the brakes are a little touchy here, so I'll try to slow down just a bit here. Yeah, I'm still still trying to get a little better with those. Okay, here we are, lined up with our runway. We are ready to go. Okay, let's go ahead and that looks good. We'll start adding some power, and we'll look for about 200 kilometers. Final check, 
We have three green down and lock. We have our flaps down. This looks like a nice stable approach. We'll pull up just a bit here. And that's pretty much it. bit of a hard landing but nothing too bad so here we are guys welcome to Stockholm we just finished the first part of our intercontinental ferry flight so we, uh, we'll continue on our next one tomorrow morning but yeah guys I uh, appreciate you joining in for the first part of this and uh, I'll try to make this uh, a little bit more interesting we'll add in some more uh, scenery like I said and, uh, some scenarios along with it failures whatnot so other than that guys I'll see you next time